information recycling. You can see this. This is a good presentation about the post GIS topology modeling. Okay, what is post GIS? Maybe you, I don't know if you're interested in this part. Maybe you know. Anyway, I will go quickly over it. It's an extension to the database PostgreSQL. PostgreSQL is a BSD database management system with all the characteristics of powerful, the most powerful databases out there. Uh, it does have corporate support. And PostGIS adds functionality that allows you to make spatial queries. These are example queries. How far did the bus travel last week? And this is the corresponding SQL query. This is the timeline of the PostGIS development since 2001. All the features that have been added. It has OGC compliance since 2004. Up to, can store up to four dimensions for each uh, vertex since 2006. <coughs> ISO SQLMM compatibility as of 2007. New geography type last year, two years ago actually. <coughs> and well, and last year version 2.0 came out. This was not yet released at the time. At the time, I made this, this slide. This is the adoption timeline by other software components. You can see since 2006, also proprietary software vendors started adding support for PostGIS. For example, Esri came a bit late, 2006, but finally got it. Why? Because their users wanted PostGIS support. Support corporation users, government users. Here is another slide about the scalability. You can see that proprietary software licenses are sold by CPU, so if you have a work for it, you more. With PostGIS, you don't pay a license, so you can install it from whatever machine you want, how many machines you, you want. This is where PostGIS can be placed on a map shown a, on a diagram shows the functionality versus price. It has the same functionality level of the big provider counterparts but there's no price. These are statistics made by all of which is an independent uh, statistics gathering uh, service. It makes the statistics by looking at the, the, the data flow on the source code repository. This is the number of commits over time. And we get to, and now we get to top topology. Topology is something that was drafted uh, already in 2006, but uh, it, it became a prime time citizen of PostGIS since uh, version 2.0. It came out last year. Okay, this is a small timeline of the software. The last, the last improvement uh, came with funding from a public uh, administration, which is the Tuscany region. Which finally made it into the core of PostGIS. So, why topology? Uh, topology is used to, to get normal, uh, normalize the model for your special data. 
we can have a standard interface to manage this topology. And we can ensure there is an integrity <coughs> in the data. You can reduce storage sites and you have explicit relationships, special relationships. The standard interface part is interesting because uh, <coughs> many people are trying to, to model the, their data in a topological way, but everyone needs his own model. I think it in, into the core of PostGIS it's a standard model for that, so everybody can build functionalities of, on it. Uh, the standard model, by the way, is the specified by an ISO document. It's part of the ISO SQL ML specification. <coughs> Topological integrity means that every intersection is explicitly uh, stored as a node. It means that uh, edges are shared, not separate entities. This is an example of what happens if you take each, uh, each polygon which belongs to a single country and simplify it using the, the Douglas Polygon simplification algorithm. What happens is that you lose all the relationship between these overlaps and underlaps. Reduce the storage size because a single edge is stored only once. <coughs> and you can have also hierarchical layers. So one uh, feature can be defined by a list of of, of its components. For example, a state is a collection of regions, a region is a collection of provinces, and so on. Explicit spatial relationship means that you have to build it again and again. But what happens now is when you ask when you ask PostGIS if two geometries overlap, for example, what happens is that PostGIS takes the two geometries, builds the topology on the fly, and gives you an answer based on that. If you store directly the topology, you don't have to, to, do, to redo the step again and again. This is the conceptual model of the topology. The faces, nodes, and edges. For each edge, you know which, which is the edge that comes next by going around it, the ring in counterclockwise order. You know which phase is on the left and which phase is on the right. Then on top of, on, of these, which are the primitives, edges, phases, and nodes, you have total geometries, which are geometries defined by their primitive components. This means that, uh, for example, uh, a region can be defined by a set of phases that define the region. Or as a road can be defined by segments, edges that are the segments of the road. You can define hierarchical layers, what we said before, that for example, a state, layer of state can be defined by a set of regions which are in, a, in another layer. There could be a base layer for regions and a hierarchical layer for states. Physical model we can jump, I think tells you how in the database the, the data is stored. You, okay, you have, um, what is the, the, the topology supporting PostGIS? It's a set of, of functions. They are written in BL, PG, SQL, um, give you all the management uh, functionalities that you need to create topologies and edit them. New thing is also two zero. It's old news, probably. The SQL element topology is with the standard functions defined by SQL ISO ISO documents and are all available now. There is a topology of GML output, so you can output all your data that way. Tiger, which is the USA standard road network. Parcel network can be counted directly. So this is an example of, of, of uh, using the, the primitive uh, functions I will quickly away. Mm -hmm. Nodes, edges, 
that can be its by set by adding the closing edge two phases associated. So now there's only one phase. When you add the edge, automatically the second phase is, uh, is inset, is created. Okay, split edges, uh, add edges by splitting phases. And, and then you can create topo geometry. For example, this one tells that creates a topo geometry which represents the area covered by phase four. But you can also have one geometry, topo geometry, is called that, are, that is composed by two phases, phase one and five, or two and three. Same thing with the edges. You can have multi, multi edges objects and with one space. Okay, this is, again, this is all, this is from 2011, so something we had already. And by that time, uh, I envisioned one function that would, would have been easy to, to construct a project, which was from a geometry constructed top of geometry. That, that function was uh, implemented, is implemented now. A quantum GZ editing toolbar is not implemented yet, but is in the works. Grasp again. Also, somebody is working on that. Okay. That's it. But now, since this is all news, I wanted to show you something. Okay. This is quantum GIS. And uh, this is a Hungary. <laughs> He laughed because he, he, gave, he, he came with this uh, use case. Use case, yeah. He said, ah, I tried to build the thing right. Okay, so here is the thing. Mm -hmm. This is the table with the geometry. And now you see that I, I created another column which is of type topo geometry, which represents the same information only in a different data type. This is the one with geometries. And this is the one with top of geometry. It was the difference. They look the same, but the truth is that this one is defined by the components. Where are the components? If you Use the DB manager, you can select the topology. Which was just a gate. Uh, it's called Hungary. Go to schema, top of viewer. This top of viewer basically creates a set of layers that can show you faces, nodes, and edges. For example, let's do this on the top. Uh, okay, I want to see the nodes. And these are the nodes, these are the faces. I want to see the edges. And these are the edges. Now what happens is that if I edit an edge, the top of geometry also changes automatically with no let's try a shared one. Give uh, some transparency so we are sure we don't miss. We notice if there is another map. Okay. Let's say I want to change this one, which is shared. This is a development version of quantum JS, so it's not the 
с нами со своими спортами. Окей, okay, while my computer gets back to in control, if you have questions, I can answer your questions. say you create a new topo geometry and what happens is that it adds new primitive objects as a consequence of this. What happened is that a new edge was created and the old one remained. But the, the topo geometry is now defined in a different way. That's it. That's it. Question for you. Um, do you know, have there been attempts to read in the whole OpenStreetMap database into PostGIS and Proton topology? Not that I know of. Not, not, with this, not that I know of with this topology model. I think it would be a long word because it's not, the data has to be adapted. So it's not already defined in topological adapter. I suppose you could use like um, maps like to render like find a piece of the problems and then I know like people have been it's to developing tools uh, for, for like the community to go and fix it, but like, identify it. And, um, I don't know, the, the, the idea of the topology is that you have a consistent structure. Mm -hmm. A definition of the map is not that structure. And I think <coughs> it makes sense for the street map because for a community yeah. everywhere. So, uh, Wouldn't it make sense for the street map to have explicit topology? People, people tend to copy a piece and then sort of build what they need. Mm. But why wouldn't they, once it's built and cleaned, why wouldn't they put it back and why wouldn't the community create a topological version of OpenStreetMap? Where is that? Not useful. It would require a change to the, 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 the current data structure, um, which is a lot of um, work. So, or you know, not just working in the API, but then also everyone who's using the show data would then need to change the way that they're using the data. Um, there is currently talk of getting areas put into, um, you know, a, a, as a defined areas. object. Yeah. You know, so you've got you've kind of got nodes, ways, and relations, um, and areas are essentially fudged at the moment. Yeah. And so one of the the thoughts in a future API release would be to have areas as a first class citizen such that you can say this is definitely going to be an area and it's going to be a valid area, whereas at the moment you can have areas which are invalid. Um, it's like this specific model is not, could not be, uh, 
not be able to go on the information from a stream of affairs because it's uh, just a one of some issues. So, there's no way to cross the other node, for example, which is the same. If you, if you set, set, set there and use a, a set of heuristics, you probably would manage to do the translation. In this case, if someone writes that software, you do that translation. I'm just wondering if there was a faction within the OSM community that wants that to happen. I've I mean, not heard. I, I, the the, 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 the you know, chip files are fine for certain things, but mm. you do want full topology for certain, yep. certain um, I'd, analysis. I'd, so then you abandon chip files and yeah. you something else. I've not, I've not come across anyone saying in field, because this is the first time I've actually come across this topology with them, just to... Uh, okay, so I mean, this is the math, the conversion process that converts it into, like, this to this, whatever, and then, but that's, and then you, But that's and then a very you, old, that's a very old post just format, which doesn't take into account topology, so... Sure, but, like, once it's there, then you can, uh, I mean, people do the routing and all that, so, like, they do want, like, topology mm. to be, like, right, but it's, like, it's, like, not, like, necessarily part of OpenStreetMap. Yeah. But people, I suppose people will find problems in it and then like, people will fix them. Yeah. I suppose there's PG routing, which is yes. a, a separate module which people use for doing that uh, kind of routability <coughs> stuff within Postgres. Mm -hmm. um, Navigation stuff work, like people will find it, like, does it like, navigate you right, like, the right way here because it's like, not connected. Yeah. Like, it'll get fixed. They'll get fixed, yeah. The more, the more people that use the data, and I suppose, I suppose it's what... What's that? I mean, the more you enforce a registration that all the data is not there, the more the more you can use it. Adding a point is easy. Adding a topology, maybe. It's relatively. So, it's depends on how it's implemented. I mean, there are a lot of systems now where you add a point and the system behind the scenes has a background process, rebuilds the topology. Um, so, I mean, if it had been designed to include explicit topology, you could do some really neat things without having to extract a part and build it all yourself. And then what I'm saying is after you've built something interesting and you've added value, you can't put it back anywhere because the original is the sort of the non topological structure. I mean, yeah, but the original, I mean, but the fact is that you have a, a, an object with topology and you can add over it. Right? The fact is that here sometimes uh, editing of an street map, you have uh, a node or a, a line away or whatever, and you happen to change it because you uh, give it, making a, a bit of modification, and you change and you change the ID and so on. Mm -hmm. So basically you have to, whether the editor or the user knows enough to Say the topology, even if I mean it's it's not so simple. Given also the fact that I think that I'm thinking of um, different users can use the I mean different methods can use the, the the information in quite different ways. So you have uh, people who is doing a historical mapping, or um, and it's the topology has to. Maintain all these things together somehow. Not easy. But also your way. My point is that it can also limit you what you mm. can do. That's true. Yeah. Unless you had versions, but that would make the thing even messier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's already versioning in OpenStreetMaps. So. Well, yeah, but if you had topology version. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to indicate that this is a flyover. No, I want to indicate that this is connected or whatever. You would have people mm. who would have different opinions yeah. about how they want to modify or uh, represent yeah. connections. Yeah. And so you'd have you know, version assuming this. Version assuming you can just uh, you walk. I suppose, I, suppose, I suppose that's one difference between shape files and OpenStreetMap is in OpenStreetMap the connectivity is explicit, whereas in shape files there's no way of being able to say two different lines definitely join here. Mm -hmm. Um, which is why in quite a lot of cases where um, US shapefiles have been used, for example on bridges, it'll tell you to, oh, just suddenly jump off the bridge and go this road underneath. Which if you're a forestrian, you would you know, be tempted to do. You'd say, okay, I can see, I can just you know, sort of hop off and run down there and off mm -hmm. the street. When you're on a vehicle, you can't. That sort of well, actually, quite a lot of occasions you can do that even as a pedestrian, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
splat. No, no, no. I don't want to be advocating people going splat on the road below a bridge. Anyway, there is another topology. Yeah. It's called uh, network topology. It's also yeah. standard by ISO. There is not this kind. Not yeah. Yeah. Do the series.